All right, time now to talk about our keynote speaker. And he's a guy that, if you think about it, there are many different titles you can use to describe him. I wrote down about six or seven. One of them's Florida State Seminole. He's a really good player of his own right uh, back in the day. You could also call him Burt Reynolds, good buddy and teammate. It's pretty cool. He was a head coach. He's been a successful businessman. Mr. Saturday Morning is one you could call him, but I think the best description of Lee Corso is force of nature. If you've ever seen him on a Saturday morning on ESPN, he is a force of nature. He's a lot of fun. He's got some outstanding words to talk about here in just a moment. So please join me in welcoming Lee as he shares his humor, his strength of heart, and amazing spirit in the face of staggering obstacles. Lee Corso. Thank you. In case uh, any of you didn't know it, I uh, suffered a stroke a couple years ago. I've had um, a lot of therapy, and it's helped, but I have trouble speaking at times. So bear with me today, okay? Appreciate it. Thanks to the choir and, and Tanya for a presentation, and Drew, thank you for the introduction and the invitation to speak at Let's Talk Luncheon. Uh, with no warning, signs, or any indication I was ill, on May 9th, 2009, at 8.30 in the morning, I walked out to get the newspaper. And when I come back, my wife looked at me, she started to cry. Because <laughs> um, my face was disordered. And um, she took me to the hospital and uh, I was in the emergency room for th three days, and uh, before they started doing the therapy, and the, the one thing I remember about that is I, I had to follow, I had to pass a swallow test, and I tell you what, I failed it, <laughs> and then three days, I finally passed the swallow test. I had, I couldn't wait to have a Coke. <laughs> After um, seven days of occupational speech and physical therapy, I was released from the hospital. And um, the hours of therapy were good to me. And I, I tell you one thing, speaking to the four of the guys and, or women who've had a stroke. It's very important they set a goal. Because in May, I set a goal in three months, I'd be back on national television. And um, I made it, thanks to the people. Thanks for praying a lot, a lot. And uh, I made it. But you know one thing, since then, I cry a lot. <laughs> I, I can get emotional just watching television commercials. <laughs> and, uh, and it was really tough for me to watch the choir and things like that because it, I remember exactly how they were. And so the doctor came to me after about a year, and he told me, Lee, 
you'll never be the same. So you better adjust your life. Because once you have a stroke, you're never the same. I don't care how long it is or what you do, you'll never be the same. So I adjusted in a, a word I noticed caregivers. A word for the caregivers. Have patience. Because we don't want to do things we do <laughs> that make you anxious. We can't help it. So you have to please be very patient. To the donors, you people don't know how much your support means to everybody. It helps, it really does. Look at me, I'm a survivor. Thanks to people. <laughs> and, they, and to the medical people, thank you for your dedication, it helps. As I said, look at me. But uh, if you, oh, before I forget, this Burt Reynolds thing, I want to straighten it out. For sure. <laughs> I was famous in Florida State for one thing. I was Burt Reynolds' roommate. <laughs> and everybody says, so what? I said, so what? The guy was so good looking, I used to send him out for bait. <laughs> he didn't come back to me. Come back from the student union with two girls. One was beautiful, the other was uh uh. <laughs> and he took the beautiful ones, I got the uh. <laughs> but I found out early his, his ugly girlfriends were better than anything I'd get them on. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you about Bert. With his looks and my car, we kill him in Tallahassee. <laughs> uh, I've had a long career. In, I was in coaching a lot, and then I, uh, people ask me, Coach, when did you know it was time to retire? I said, it was easy. They quit asking me to coach. <laughs> and so then I went, to, I went to television. I got a job at ESPN, and my two favorite stories at ESPN. It's one year I picked Florida State to play Virginia Tech before the season for the national championship. That's hard to do. You never really do that, ever. I've only done it once in 28 years, but I picked Florida State to play Virginia Tech, and they played. And I became a hero at Virginia Tech, Blacksburg. They all loved me for that. So the next year we will go to Virginia Tech, and I'm on stage the first game, and we got to pick who's going to win the next year. And I said, Florida State's going to repeat. I said, I said, I didn't say very nice things about Virginia Tech. I was, a, I was very critical and critical of them about it. This is a true story. You ain't going to believe this. About two minutes after I said that, out of light lightning comes out of stripes. <laughs> Boom, it's a tremendous electrical storm. If you don't believe it, they called the game off. They did. And I said, holy mackerel, I walked over, I was walking over the stage, I said, what, what the hell happened? The guy said, lightning hit. I said, yeah. He said, I said, where did it hit? He said, over there. I said, what did it hit? He said, a car. I said, what color? <laughs> Lightning hit my car. <laughs> Blew up my national rental car. <laughs> Made it fly. And I got back on the stage. I said, I don't know what a hokey is, but God is one of them. Go Virginia Tech. <laughs> it, it, you know, everywhere. Everywhere we go, go it's like a, it's like a rock concert. I we, I really work with some nice looking guys. Boy, Kirk and Desmond and Chris, they're good looking guys. That girls that come up and throw keys up on the stage, <laughs> throw underwear up on the stage, and oh man, and they've signed so Kirk, will you marry me? Chris, I love you. 
me, six years, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we went back last year. I looked, we were walking on the stage and I looked up and there was a 98 year old woman. <laughs> could hardly stand up, had a sign that said, Granny's for Corso. <laughs> I said, man, you're looking at an AARP sex symbol right here. <laughs> you know, um, I'd like to share with you some things I learned along the life, my life. First of all, in building a team, any kind of team, including the ones you have here, you win with character not characters. And there's a hell of a difference between it and You win with characters. You surround yourself with good people. You win with character, not characters. Because you know, when things are going good, all of the, everything is going right. But as soon as something goes bad, all the characters will point the finger and not the thumb. And there's a hell of a difference between a finger and a thumb. And I'll tell you, characters will get you beat. Not only will they get you beat, they'll get you fired. I'll guarantee you, if you've got them in your organization, they'll get you beat. You, I think one of the best things I learned, you never evaluate your, your program or your teamwork on, based on productivity, but do it on character. I'll tell you why. You never get rid of a good, hardworking, loyal, dedicated human being. Never. They're hard to find. In football, if he's a tackle and he can't handle the outside rush, you move him to guard. If he can't block the inside, you move him to center. If he can't block in the center, you, will, you take him to all the banquets with you. And introduce your football player. <laughs> Might not be a good kid, but he's a great kid. When I was a coach, I used to have a test. I'd bring the players to Indiana, and I'd sit them in the front row of the basketball game. And I'd watch them when the national anthem was played. I'd watch them. I had three kids, great looking kids. They wanted them to be really bad. But when the national anthem was played, they would not get up and stand up. They wouldn't take their hat off. So I said to my assistant, hey, hey, get, you see those guys right there? He said, yeah, get rid of them. I don't want to see them guys. They're not good people. They'll get us, he said, but they're really great. They'll help us win. And I said, you, get them on that, you half time. You want to, you want to go with them? He said, no. I said, well, then get rid of him. I never, I felt so good, you know. I felt so good. There was three players that needed, and it got rid of him. And I felt so good, so good. And I didn't ever see him again till the next year, the first game. They were on the other team. <laughs> and they were killing me. One was running. <laughs> I was throwing the kitchen and everything else, and I said, oh, jeez. I can't believe it. Those guys, I said, wait till we get them next year. Well, the next year, the same thing. Those three guys beat my brains out again. And I said, oh, man, I know. I know this is right. I know this. Let me tell you what happened. Three weeks after that, one was caught for assault. One burglary, one attempted murder. Those three guys were kicked off the football team. And my close friend, a real close friend, was a coach. And he never coached another game in his life. He never once, good friend of mine. Let me tell you what, the lesson I learned, never prostitute your integrity to get a job or to keep one. That guy, my close friend, knew those were bad people. He prostituted his integrity for a few lousy games to win. 
and he lost his job. He lost his career. He lost everything. Now, I tell you, if, if you have a job right now and somebody asks you to prosecute your integrity, leave. Quit. Don't stay there. Because let me tell you one thing I learned. Never prostitute your integrity to get a job or to keep one. Never. And then another thing I learned is I learned about leadership and character. The true test of a human being's character is how he treats people he doesn't need. The true test of a human being's character is how he treats people he doesn't need. You know this. Everybody treats the vice presidents and vice guys good. Everybody treats them class and dignity. But how do you treat the people in your organization, like in football, that don't play? Not how do you treat the tra- stars, but how do you pe- treat the people on your little on your team? And I mean one thing. We have reunions everywhere. Of all the years I've done, my players thank me for being good to players that didn't play. They still remember that. It's the most important thing. Because the true test of your character is not how you treat people that you can use, but how you treat people you can't use. And then you get the point, I gotta tell you my favorite, I was 47 years old. I was the head coach at Indiana. I had everything. I had a long contract, a winning team. I had boats, car, car, money, everything. And I got the first break in my life. Indiana fired me. (laughs) Overnight. I read about it in the paper. (laughs) Corso fired. I'm telling you, that was a traumatic experience. Not only did it fire me, it fired me in the paper. It was my first break in my life, and I tell you, my wife cried, my kids cried, because they found out there was in school, and they found that out. I got fired. And they really hurt my family, which really meant a lot to me. Hurting my family, you don't do that. And that's what they did. But I said, ah, I don't worry about it. I remember I used to make a hundred motivational speeches a year. And every time I go to make a motivational speech, President would come up to me and said, Lee Corso, here's my card. You just call me if you ever need me. I called 100 of the son of a bitches. <laughs> Do you know how many, <laughs> many call me back? <laughs> Nada. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. One of those guys ever called me back. And they were going to help me so much. Oh, golly. But I learned a valuable lesson. I learned that 95% of your true friends live under the same roof that you do. (laughs) When it got down to it, I had Betsy, Steve, Dave, Dan, and Diane. That's all I had. And that's why I say to people, you can't be too nice to your family. You can't love your spouse too much. You can't love your kid. You can't love them. You think you spoil them? Do more. <laughs> you can't physically, you gotta love them. You gotta do everything you can for your family. That's all, i tell you why, that's all you got that's worth anything in the world. That's all you got. In fact, I, it's true. 95% of the true friends you have are them. And you know what? 
I'm a, I got one plaque. It's on my desk. All the television, all the coaching, all the things I've got, I got one plaque. It says the Coach Lee Corso, for 28 years of coaching with honesty and integrity. You know who gave me that? My family. <laughs> my family. That's the only thing I've got to bet him. I've already told my wife, Betsy, when I go, the only thing I'm in that casket besides me is that plaque. <laughs> I want that plaque with me. Because you know what? If you, if you go along in your life, you try to never prostitute your integrity to get a job or to keep one, Maybe someday you'll get a plaque. <laughs> because our greatest glory in this life consists not in never falling, but rising every time you fall. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I did it.